as people who sell on Amazon know, there's this thing called the buy box. And there's not only one anymore. There's lots of different buy boxes, uh, not only business and non-business, but even the regular buy box is different depending on the location of your inventory and uh, the location of the customer looking at the page and all of that stuff. And so we're all competing for that normal buy box. And then the business buy box is a whole separate buy box that if I go to a product page with a business account, I see that buy box instead of the normal buy box. And so for me, the reason I turned it on is because it just, it gives me a leg up against anyone who does not have that turned on. Because let's say in the normal buy box, I'm at $40 and the person I'm competing is at $39, but I have my business price set at $38 and 50 cents or something like that. And a business person goes to that page, they're going to see me over the other person and that other person, if they go to the page, they might not even know that I have a business price set up and that they should be competing with it if they don't have a business account themselves. Yeah, that's exactly right. It's, uh, it's becoming more and more um, uh, nuanced um, with all the different buy boxes. You know, even last year, Amazon was doing a big push uh, for that program called Bopus, um, buy online, pick up in store. Um, not a great uh, acronym, but uh, it's it was even you know if you, they, they referred to that um, as hyper localized buy boxes. You know you're you know somewhere in in the city in New York, and there's a Best Buys there that's got pickup. You know you're only going to see that buy box if you're inside Manhattan, as an example. And so you do see that for for hyper localized goods. Um, you you know Prime users. Um, and non-prime users, they get different buy boxes. And yeah, like you said, business buyers and non-business buyers get different buy boxes. And it's exactly right. You don't even know that you might be competing against a business offer. And when the customer arrives, they're going to see the best offer. And that might be a business price in the business buy box. For sure. Yeah. So you, in my mind, it's a, it's a no-brainer to turn it on, especially for resellers, because you know if you don't have it turned on, you're not competing there at all. If you do have it turned on, you may have a leg up over everyone else who's reselling on the the same listing if they're not doing the same. Yeah, that's that's exactly right. And and I think also, um, you know, one of the reasons it took so long for the industry to, to create solutions for the business buy box is because of how limiting the data was. So you know, I don't know if you remember back in the days, setting trying to set business business um, business prices when there wasn't any automation, you didn't know what to set the prices at, you know, for the quantity discounts, which we haven't even touched on yet. But, you know, maybe you wanted to offer 10 units of uh, cleaning products uh, for 10% off. You know, if you buy 10 units, get 10% off or, you know, something like that. But you didn't know what everyone else was offering. Someone may have been offering, you know, 10% off for five units or 10% off for 20 units. And so you were just making this outlandish decision about what you thought was a really good discounted rate, which for the private label space makes a lot of sense because you're sort of looking at supplementary products and similar sales ranks. And you just say, you know what, this seems like a good value option. Same as walking into a 7-Eleven and they've got buy one Kit Kat for one, you know, one price and get the second one for 10% off, you know, or half price. So it's not part of that situation. But in the wholesale and, and, and uh, arbitrage type space, it's a bit different and you couldn't compare those business offers. And so Amazon last year released all this data, which made it possible for, for developers to start building out tools to actively compete automatically using algorithms uh, for the best best prices. And, and this indus- part of the industry is still in infancy. So, you know, we, we sometimes see people turn on the business through pricing and uh, they've got no competition whatsoever. And so you're winning 100% of the buy box on the business side because the competition just doesn't exist. Yeah. And what what better situation is that if you're selling on a listing that maybe has three or four other people, they don't have the business repricing turn on, you do, or the business buy box, I should say, the business pricing. And yeah, you're just automatically getting every single one of those customers that comes on that is logged into a business account, which is a, a pretty large amount. Do you do you know the the percentage of people that are shopping with a business account off the top of your head? 
I actually don't, but it would be interesting to to run some numbers because I could probably do some research with our, our data team and ask them to bring up a report of what percentage of the orders are going through um, on Amazon business. And, and B2C still predominantly is, um, you know, the major channel. But where we see a lot of growth is in B2C, people buy things in single units. And the average quantity size on B2B is much higher. And so especially, you know, if you're an FBM seller and you can get someone to buy two items, a small item, you're putting two in a box, that's a really good deal for you. And I think one of the challenges the industry still faces, and I think Amazon is probably working on it behind closed doors, but, you know, you're an FBM seller and you're offering a quantity discount for two units or five units or 10 units. But at the moment, you're still paying an identical per unit fulfillment fee, FBA fee, big impact fee for selling five units. And so the FBM seller can put two in a box, but you're still getting charged $3.40 each unit for selling five. And I think that for the, the industry to become really robust and for people to really jump on board, Amazon needs to provide some type of concession to make um, it, a, it more uh, uh, valuable or of, of interest to sellers to actually offer discounts. It definitely should be that... If someone takes advantage of that quantity discount, you're only paying the fee one time. 